Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eric Black, I am a clarinetist, and today I am excited to share with you a pretty special project I've been working on for the last month, month and a half. So today I'm doing a full review and comparison of the Van Doren B-flat clarinet French cut reed lineup. Now, right off the bat, I'd like to say that Van Doren has not sponsored this video in any way. That being said, I have used Van Doren reeds for the majority of both my pre-professional and professional career. Now, before we get too far, let me quickly just explain how I went about setting up this review and comparison. I started by breaking in a full box or 10 reeds of each of the boxes shown here. So we have the traditionals, the V12s, the Rula Peak 56s, and the V21s. I use a slightly modified version of my normal break-in process just to save a little bit of time. And if you're curious how I break in my reeds, uh, I also have a video of that on my channel. I will leave a link to it in the description box below. All 40 reeds were strength 3.5 and broken in the exact same way. I took meticulous notes over the course of the break-in process. You can find charts of these um, notes towards the end of the video. After the reeds were broken in, I picked one representative reed from each box and then played a series of both scales and excerpts that showed not only the response and articulation of each reed, but their sound, of course, as well. All the reeds were played on and recorded within the same hour to reduce the chance that the reeds could change or I could change in any way over the course of a day or days if I had spent multiple days recording them. The clarinet equipment used was the same throughout the entire video. I used the same mouthpiece, ligature, instrument combination, and I will list that in the description box below. The audio equipment I used was also the same throughout the video. I used a pair of microphones with a very flat or neutral frequency response, which means that essentially the sound going into them should be very, very similar to the sound that you are getting out of your speakers. That being said, I would use a pair of nice headphones or speakers to listen to the recordings. That way you get the full benefit of the nuance from read to read. Now, I haven't post-processed my audio samples in any way. I want the sound to be as pure as it possibly can. The acoustics in this room are by no means perfect, but it should be good enough for this little comparison. The order in which I play the excerpts will always go traditional, V12, Rilla Peak 56, and then V21. I will be playing an extended C major scale, both slurred and articulated, followed by a little bit, just the opening of the first movement of the second Brahms Sonata, and then I will be doing just a little bit, a few bars of Mendelssohn's scherzo movement from a Midsummer Night's Dream. There will be three sets of recordings total. Following the recordings, I will give my general impressions as to how I felt each read sounded and played. Now, let's jump right into it.
Now, before we go any further, please comment below what you thought of each read. Which read was your favorite? Which read did you like the least? I don't want you to be influenced by the following review portion of this video. I want your honest feedback. Now, as I alluded to earlier, I have played all of these reads at different points in my career. The traditionals I played predominantly um, through my graduate degree. The V12s, I played both a little bit in undergrad, but predominantly I played them for most of my professional career. Uh, as I do gigs and take auditions, these have been my go-to. The Rula Peak 56s, I played for most of my undergraduate career, probably a good two or three years. And the V21s also spent a little bit of time uh, in my rotation towards the end of my undergraduate career. While I was playing these reads, they all worked beautifully for me at the time. That being said, they did not all work equally well for me during this review. That could be due to any number of factors. My playing has certainly changed over the years. The equipment I play on has changed as well. And I am sure that some of these reads are not particularly well cut out to uh, match with my particular instrument, ligature, and mouthpiece combination. Expanding on that idea, everyone uses different equipment. We all have different oral cavities. We all have different amounts of embouchure pressure that we exact on the mouthpiece and reed. We all have different air speeds. There could be so many different reasons why something may work for someone and may not work for someone else. I have many friends and colleagues that play on any one of these reeds and without fail, they all sound beautiful. So I really don't think there is a quote unquote best read here. It's all dependent on what you are using and what you're used to and what you're looking for in a read. The point of this review and comparison is to give you an idea of how these reads will break in, how they'll sound, how they'll hopefully articulate for you. But again, I can't predict 100% how any of these may end up working for you. Now to judge and compare these reads, I will talk about four different criteria. How the read sounded, how the read responded, i.e. how it spoke at different dynamic levels, how the read articulated, and how the read ultimately broke in. Van Dorn describes the way each read sounds in the following way. For the traditionals, they write, they are described as giving the sound a richness of tone that gives body and clarity to the sound. For the V12s, due to having a longer palate, they are described as having a deeper, richer sound. For the Rula Peaks, they are described as having a rich, centered, and extremely pure sound. For the V21s, they are described as allowing all registers of the instrument to be played with warmth and depth of sound. It is incredibly difficult talking about sound in any appreciable way without having audio examples to illustrate your words. So it's understandable that Van Doren describes each of these reads in a somewhat abstract manner. But having just listened to all of these excerpts, I think there is quite a bit of truth to these generalized statements. All right, so keeping the Van Dorn descriptions in mind, I'm gonna give you my quick breakdown of how I felt about the sound of each read. The traditionals, while they were my personal least favorite sound-wise, I think had a very beautiful classic clarinet sound, a lot of warmth to the sound. There was a tremendous amount of color and overtones and harmonics there, um, all around a really nice sounding read. The V12s had the largest sound of any of these four reeds. It had a very beautiful, nice covered sound. Um, I feel like in a large ensemble or anything where I would really need to project, these would probably be my go-to. The Rue Peak 56s had my personal favorite sound. 
I have to agree with Van Doren, who said they were very pure sounding. I thought they were incredibly pure sounding. They have a great center to them. I would describe them as having a very dolce, a very sweet um, singing sound at almost all times. Uh, these really, really impressed me sound-wise. The V21s, uh, I have to say that while I was playing them, breaking them in, I was not a fan of their sound. Behind the instrument, I felt they, they sounded a little unfocused, or they didn't have enough punch to them. I couldn't really get it to center or perhaps even round out the way I normally want my sound to come together. But I do have to say that after I listened to the recordings, both on their own and then in the context of the, um, the other three reads, I felt there was something really special and unique to their sound. They have a very homogenous sound no matter where you're playing or what you're doing on the instrument, low, high, articulated, slurred. They always have the same characteristic sound and there's something really, really nice about that. While they may not be for everyone, I think anyone who's looking for uh, a lot of stability in their sound would really, really like these. Okay, and so that brings us to response. And when I say response, I'm generally thinking about how easy it is to start any of these reads at any given dynamic, with uh, soft being probably the most important. If you can generally get a read to start at a really, really quiet piano, pianissimo, um, triple P, then you're going to be able to get that read to start pretty much no matter what dynamic you're playing at. First off, all these reads met my expectations in regards to response. There weren't any among the four that I felt I couldn't get to respond the way I needed them to to be able to perform my music well. That being said, they did have some differences. The traditional reeds, in general, took a little more air or embouchure support to really get them to speak the way I wanted them to, but that wasn't some huge amount. We're talking micro adjustments. The V12 reeds for me were by far the most responsive read during this test, by a wide margin. Um, coming in second, I think, would be the Rula Peak 56s. They responded very, very well. They just weren't quite as zippy as the V12s, not quite as immediate. With the V21s, I really felt myself needing to increase my air support, really pull in the corners of my embouchure to get the kind of response I needed from them. It wasn't some unmanageable amount. It was more than the traditionals. Um, but for that reason, they were probably my least favorite response-wise. The next topic is articulation. And while articulation and response are closely linked for this particular topic, I'm more interested in how easy or difficult it was to articulate notes quickly and through the various different registers of the instrument. I am also interested in the overall sound of the articulation. All right, so for the traditionals, I felt in general that these articulated pretty well. There was a little bit of an added resistance, the, especially the higher I went on the instrument, I could feel it fighting me a little bit. The sound remained pretty warm, however, I felt that in general it didn't remain as clean or crisp as some of the other reeds in the lineup. And ultimately, as I increased my articulation speed, I could feel the reed fighting me a little bit on that as well. It wasn't quite as easy to go fast as some of these other reeds. The V12 by far articulated the best of these four reeds. Uh, it was light and crisp. I had no problem playing in any register, pretty much at any speed. The sound remained very beautiful, very covered. I thought they felt and sounded nice in the scherzo, and there was no extra embouchure or airspeed manipulation needed. The Rula Peaks I thought articulated very well as well. However, the added resistance in the reeds made it a little more laborious than the V12 
at times. I wasn't crazy about how they sounded in the scherzo. Overall, I felt they sounded maybe a little bit too heavy for something that is supposed to be really quick and light. And then with the V21s, I think the extra air support and armature support, I felt I needed to really get these to speak well and ultimately articulate well. I really wasn't crazy about the articulation while I was playing these scales and excerpts. However, after I went back and listened to the recordings again, I was pleasantly surprised. I thought they kept a nice homogenous sound throughout the register, especially in the scherzo, and they kept their very distinct characteristic sound no matter what I was asking them to do. Again, was it my favorite sound? Probably not, but I can definitely see why someone might prefer it to any of these other reads. There really is just something appealing in the consistency of the sound of this particular read. All right, and that brings us to the final section of this review, how these reads ultimately broke in and what that break-in process was like. Now, I spent a lot of time preparing for this part of the review. Every day that I played any read from any of these boxes, I would write down how I felt that read responded and how it sounded and sometimes how it felt or other notes that I thought were important in describing the characteristics of any individual read. I've compiled some charts and you'll forgive me if I read off of them now. I will put them on screen so that you can see what I'm seeing. Now, you may notice that each chart starts on day three. This was done on purpose. On day one, I'm basically just playing the read for under a minute. I'm not really putting the read through its paces in any sense of the word. And on day two, while I've started to play each read for about two to three minutes, I'm still not playing through the full range of the instrument or really heavily articulating. Day three is when I really start to play a read normally, and so that's when it became possible to get a true sense of how I read sounds and responds. Also on the chart is a number before my comments. In theory, the number range is from zero to 10, with a zero being so soft that I cannot produce a sound from the read, and a 10 being so hard that I can't produce a sound, or you know can very barely produce a sound if I'm really biting or something. Both of these options rarely happen with any read made by a major brand. All of that being said, this basically implies that a five is the ideal number for a read on this scale. It is not too hard and it is not too soft. A five represents that I would feel comfortable using that read in some kind of performance scenario, whether it be a concert, a masterclass, or even a lesson or important rehearsal. So let's look at the chart for the traditionals. Van Doren describes the traditional as being the most widely played read in the professional world. They are the oldest read in Van Doren's clarinet read lineup. They also have both the thinnest tip and thinnest heel of the lineup. I've used traditionals extensively in the past. It was pretty much all I played for the entirety of grad school. Generally, I know very well how this read is going to break in, respond, and end up sounding. On Van Doren's website, you can find a read chart that shows you the Van Doren traditional generally runs the hardest of all the reads I tried. It's shown as being almost the equivalent of a V12 3.5 plus, as being harder than a Rula Peak 3.5 plus, and as being the same strength as the V21 3.5 plus. Some of you might be asking that if this is the case, why didn't I use 3.5 plus for the other reads? Well, traditionals also have the widest range of possible strengths of any of these reads. They don't do half strengths, and so in a box of traditional 3.5s, you have the opportunity to get both a read that is almost a four in strength and one that is also just barely above a three. However, in my personal experience, they are really only slightly harder than a V12 slash V21. I generally only get one or two reads a box that are harder than I'd feel comfortable playing. This also turned out to be the case for this review. As you can see, while I started out with about four fives, by the end of the break-in process, I had eight fives, one six, and an eight. 
9 out of 10 reeds being usable is exceptional for any box of reeds, and 8 of them being good enough to play in public is fantastic. For the most part, what you can see from the chart is that the reeds mostly came down in stiffness as the week progressed. V12s. Van Doren says that these are manufactured from the same cane as alto saxophone reeds. They combine that with a thicker heel, a longer palate, and a slightly thicker tip, a different tip shape, and you have the primary differences from the traditional. Strength-wise, a 3.5 V12 is considered a little softer than a 3.5 traditional. And generally, especially early on in the break-in process, I would say this is true. You can see a couple of 4s on the chart on day 3, as well as 5 5s. While there are still a couple of reeds that feel a little heavy and aren't responding that well, there are certainly fewer than the traditionals. As you can see, the V12's is broken well. As they acclimated to my mouthpiece facing, the environment, and the weather, the force stiffened up just a little bit over the course of the week. And the slightly harder reeds started to blow a little more freely. In general, despite responding well, these reeds felt and sounded pretty fuzzy or in focus until late in the break-in process. But by the end of the week, I was left with 9.5s and 1.6s. That's pretty incredible. Rula Peak 56s. I have to say, these were by far my favorite reeds to break in. From day one, 8 out of 10 of them felt and responded pretty much exactly the way I would want any of my concert reeds to feel and respond. On the chart, they are considerably softer in strength from a traditional 3.5, to the point of almost being the equivalent of a 3. Maybe this just means that I like softer reeds in general. However, I could not get over how perfect they felt pretty much the entire week. I played them for a long time in my undergraduate degree and had eventually shelved them for V12s and later V21s, but for this review it felt a lot like coming home. All that being said, by the end of the week I could tell they were starting to get too soft. While 8 of them were still 5s, there was now 1 4 and a couple others were towing the line between too soft and just right. Obviously this is something the clipping could fix if necessary, but I did want to point it out. And last but not least, that brings us to the V21. I did not enjoy breaking these in. Much like the V12s, they felt fuzzy and unfocused for the majority of the break-in process. On top of that, they also felt pretty hard to me. On the hardness chart, these are actually considered softer than the V12s, but with my equipment, overall these felt harder in general than any other read. I'm not sure why this would be, and if anyone has had a similar experience, I'd love to hear it. As you can see at the beginning of the week, I only started with one read I considered a 5. However, by the end, all the reads in the box had turned into 5s. The change over the course of the week completely blew me away, pun intended. And to be fair, part of it was me realizing that these reads required a little bit more on the shirt corner support than I had been giving them. Still, to have 10 reads worthy of being played on in front of other people by the end of a break-in process is pretty crazy. Even though the reeds still weren't my favorite sound-wise or articulation-wise or response-wise, the fact that I could slap any of them on and still be able to be relatively comfortable playing a concert, rehearsal, or anything else, that's, that's pretty crazy. Now it's time for what everyone's been waiting for, the verdict. While the V21s ended up being nothing but fives, I still wasn't super happy with what I had to do to get them to articulate, respond, and sound the way I wanted them to. It just didn't feel natural to my particular setup at this point in time. Their overall consistency is absolutely to be commended though. So looking back on all of this information, what was my favorite Van Doren read? Well, I know it's a little bit of a cop-out, but I'm going to have to pick two. Both. The V12 and Rula Peak 56s really stood out to me for different aspects of their playing. If I were to be playing in a large ensemble or orchestra, I would absolutely be picking the V12s. To me, they had the most depth in their sound, they were the easiest to articulate, and they felt really comfortable and malleable on my setup. I really would be able to get them to do anything I needed them to do. To me, the Rula Peaks had a sound that I don't think could be beat in any small ensemble, chamber ensemble, or recital setup. Uh, the sound was just so pure and 
was by far my favorite of the four reeds. The 56 has also had what I felt is pretty much the perfect resistance of a reed for my setup, and they were incredibly comfortable to play from day one. I have absolutely nothing against the traditionals or V21s. I'm sure some of you even preferred the sounds I got from these reeds in this review. However, moving forward, I know what two reeds I will primarily be using for my own practicing and performing. I hope this review has been helpful. I know it's a little long, but I really wanted to make sure I covered my bases and tried to reduce as many variables as I could so that I could give an honest and accurate comparison and review of these four reads. While no review of any equipment is going to be 100% accurate, it will hopefully give you an idea of what each read is capable of and their general characteristics. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any suggestions for gear or reads or anything you'd like me to review in the future, please let me know in the comments down below. Until next time.